Today we're talking about sodium ion batteries and a lot of people are excited for them and they have lots of cool selling points, but there's lots of stuff about them that's not being said. And for very specific use cases, they're fantastic, but not good for everything. And I finally got my hands on some new sodium ion cells. And at first my test results were really bad because the voltage range is so wide. But today I pulled full capacity. I charged them nice and slow with a power supply with 10 amps to 16 volts. And then I discharged all the way down to four volts. And then I pulled 103 amp hours, which is over 100 amp hours. And I found the data sheet and I'll link it down below. Now those results got me thinking, what if I made a 48 volt battery with these cells? The voltage range would be crazy. It would go all the way down to 16 vo volts and then all the way up to 64 volts. Now let's say that we made the perfect inverter for a sodium ion cell and it works in the whole voltage range and you get the whole capacity. But with that wide of a voltage range, when we dip down to a low state of charge, the amount of current that our system needs to handle will be a lot. So let's do an example, 12 volt inverter, 2000 watts divided by four. And these can actually go down lower. This is where most of the capacity is. The current you're gonna handle is 500 amps. Now let's say you have a 48 volt battery, and you have a 12,000 watt inverter. If you divide it by 16, you get 750 amps. And copper is not free, so you need to buy that. You need to buy larger cables. And not only are the cables going to be a lot larger, but you need to make the BMS and the breakers much larger as well. So it'll increase the total cost by a lot. So maybe the cells might be really cheap, but everything else around it to support this high current will cost more. We can always make a higher voltage battery, but if you want it safe enough to touch like a 48 volt lithium iron phosphate battery, that voltage range is going to dip down really low and that current is excessive. It's going to cost a lot of money to deal with that. Next, I've seen lots of people say that these don't have rare earth elements. Well, neither does lithium iron phosphate. Also, this is not table salt or sodium chloride. This is sodium carbonate. So it's different. Also, the processing of all the stuff in these is in China. Because it's from China, that means we need to ship it to America. And at the current trajectory for lithium ion cells, they're going to be cheaper than the shipping costs soon enough. And sodium ion cells are larger and heavier, which means you're going to pay more for shipping. Next, the cold weather performance is not that great. So lithium iron phosphate can discharge down to 14 degrees Fahrenheit. This will start charging at 14 degrees Fahrenheit. If you go any lower than that, both of them need heaters. Also, the performance suffers greatly. But the big selling point for the new sodium ion cells is that at that low temperature, there's only a 10% loss of capacity. With LFP, it's 40 to 60% loss. But when you add a heat pump or heaters, it changes these numbers. So it's really hard to say, I have to find more data. But I noticed that nobody's publishing their round trip efficiency figures. Even though this works really well at cold temperatures and all the older sodium ion batteries had horrible round trip efficiency, maybe it's because these are giving off so much heat that it's keeping itself warm. But I don't know yet because we don't have any published literature on the newest cells. Also, the latest cells can charge and discharge very quickly. But at what round trip efficiency? I don't know. I don't see any published literature on this. If you go to their website, go on the page and look at what they're saying. They tell you, yes, it can work well in the cold. Yes, it can charge and discharge quickly. And yes, eventually it will be very cheap. But that's it. They're leaving out a lot of other stuff. Also, lithium iron phosphate with heaters or a heat pump increases the availability. Also, how you store the batteries can change it as well. It's really hard to get something this large with this thermal mass down to that low of a temperature. With a lot of lithium batteries, you can discharge it for a little bit, warm it up, and then use it and charge it or add a heat pump, it's not impossible. What's wild is the Tesla Model Y is the most popular car in Norway, a very frigid cold country. How is that possible? Like it is cool that it works in low temperature, but we already have lithium ion variants that do as well, like LTO. And those can charge and discharge just as fast as sodium ion. And they have a very similar wide voltage range, which makes them a pain to work with. But these only have 2000 to 4000 cycles. LFP has like 5000 to 10,000. And the new sodium ion supposedly have 10,000, but I'll believe it when I see it. But LTO does like 20 to 25,000. 
to 80% capacity, and that's old technology. Now for off-grid solar, you don't need fast charge and discharging, and the low temp performance really doesn't matter because you're charging and discharging all day long. So usually the pack stays above that freezing temperature, especially if you're discharging slowly all night. The battery, it's really hard to get it down to those frigid temperatures. But where sodium ion really shines is that the raw material inputs are very cheap. And eventually one day these will be really cheap. Okay, that is the main selling point. That's the number one selling point. But that's gonna take some time. Also, they say that these are very safe, but it's about the same safety as LFP. This stuff can release hydrogen cyanide. Like they're not entirely inert, okay? LFP does have limited combustibility, but it's like the safety of wood. It's really hard to catch on fire. And LTO is super safe. It's crazy safe. You can drill into it, you can do a dead short, you can do all sorts of crazy stuff and it's fine. I like all the enthusiasm towards any battery because I like batteries, but yeah, I think you guys need to think more about how these things work. There's just pros and cons to everything. It's just how batteries are. And for economies of scale to make this a lot cheaper, I would expect five years. I think it's gonna take that long until we have good cells and they worked out the kinks of manufacturing them perfectly and then expect another few years to get the hardware like the inverters. I'm thinking gallium nitride, I'm thinking taking advantage of their low price and using it at the state of charge where you get the most capacity. That way you get your most bang for your buck because you're gonna be paying for more shipping and these things are gonna be bigger because I don't think you'll be able to use the whole thing. Especially with the increased cycling degradation that these have, they say that they're better now but again, I'll believe it when I see it. But once you fix all of those things, then the inverter software will be a couple more years as well. And then I'm sure someone's going to sell them for home storage. But I think the largest customer for this is utility scale projects, not household or consumers. We just already have a lot of really good stuff already and we can use it today. And we already have the manufacturing at large volume. So yeah, sodium ion is cool for very specific use cases, but I don't think it should matter to most people. There are some EVs that are coming out that are gonna be good, but I wonder what the efficiency is, especially for that fast charging. Even though it can charge quickly, it, they're not telling us what the round trip efficiency is at those high rates. And currently China has way more electrical generation capacity and lower energy prices. Our energy prices are going up. Last I read, we're building one to two nuclear reactors. They're building 27. And in the last 18 months, they added an entire American size electrical grid of capacity to their grid. And we're having a tough time powering data centers. So yeah, we are in for a surprise here soon. And all the benefits of sodium ion really don't pertain except for the price. And so maybe in the future, if the price is really, really low, maybe in like 10 or 15 years, sure. But I'm not getting excited. There's nothing here that's really cool. I mean, it is cool. It's definitely cool, but not for what I'm doing. I hope they make a really good starting battery because I would love to put one of these in my van. And hopefully America starts making more solar farms, nuclear reactors, and everything else in large batteries because we need them. Also, we're very dependent on China for all of these batteries. For lithium iron phosphate, 98% of the stuff comes from China. We don't make it. There's small little projects and lines here and there, but the volume, look at how much we actually do. It is so minuscule compared to China. And again, I'm not part of big lithium or big sodium or anybody. I don't care. All I'm here to do is show you how it works and test it. And so far, I'm not that excited about sodium ion. I know I see all these YouTubers and they're like, oh my gosh, it's the next big thing. I think the clickbait title works because my video with the sodium ion battery got more views than anything else. You guys just need to calm down about sodium ion. Also, the low prices are not validated. There was another study posted on my form and the difference in cost per kilowatt hour was only $3. So I think people need to look up their sources and see if it actually makes that big of a difference because it might not. And I think for most consumers, they're probably not gonna care about sodium ion, except for starting batteries. I think that'll be pretty cool. But I would love to see some LTO because they have way better cycle life than these and no one's talking about them at all. That would be cool. They would work perfect for a starting battery and people are using them. They cost more, but you get way more cycle life. So of course it should make up for it, right? Anyways, lots of pros and cons, lots of factors to think about. It's just another battery. And personally, I'm going for LFP high voltage batteries. I think those are the most exciting, the highest efficiency, and you can buy them today. 
So yeah, those are pretty cool. I wanna review more of those as well. Now running this channel, I get battery breakthroughs every single day to my email. I ignore most of them. Until they can actually send me something that I can test, then I don't care about it. It's like every single week these YouTubers are cranking out more and more battery breakthroughs, and I know it's just the tiniest little cell in a laboratory, and they're like, oh, I got 50,000 cycles, zero degradation. It's like, okay, send me a battery, let's see what it can do. And sodium ion has some promising stuff. It is pretty cool in some ways, and once the price comes down, they'll be awesome. But for now, I don't think anybody should even care about it because it's gonna take some time and a lot of work. By the time that time comes, LFP is gonna improve as well, and so will all the other hardware. So let's just see what happens. I'll keep posting all types of batteries, and we'll see what wins. Anyways, I hope you liked my video, and I will see you in the next one. Bye.